With over 400 million views, translations into 70 languages, the Chosen television series has taken the world by storm. Joining me now to give us a sneak peek behind season four of this dramatic retelling of the life of Jesus are the longtime co-writers of the series, Ryan Swanson and Tyler Thompson. Welcome to 100 Help Me Street, Ryan and Tyler. Thank you for having us. Good to us. be here. Well, the last time I caught up with you guys, I was there in Midlothian, Texas on set, getting to ask you a few questions about season three. But so many things have changed and we're on to season four now. It's very exciting. Ryan, I wanted to ask you, when you began working on this series with Tyler in Dallas, did you ever anticipate that you would ha there would be this kind of success around The Chosen? You know, it's, it's a strange thing. We, we, had to, we had to move forward with the confidence to believe that, you know, like the three of us felt, uh, that, that we might hit an audience that was as passionate about the Bible as we were. Mm -hmm. And that we were telling the greatest story ever told in a new medium. So there was that working for us. On the other hand, we, we were in a basement in Elgin, <laughs> Illinois, and uh, Amanda was bringing us snacks, and you know we were all sort of wandering around the room and putting notes up on a board, and so there was a big chance that no one was ever gonna see anything we were doing there mm -hmm. that day. And I think that that freedom, you know, being somewhere between, you know, we might, we, we might be able to, to find an audience that relates to what we're trying to do, and that idea that, well, no one will ever see this, so let's take a chance, mm. uh, was, was what allowed us to sort of push forward and dare to, dare to get it wrong in places and, and dare to push boundaries, you know. I think what we started with was such a wonderful device, and that was that lens mm. on the stories of Jesus that we don't touch. That stuff's right. behind an electrified fence, but through the eyes of the people who Jesus encountered or who would have been impacted by his work, that we can dramatize their stories, that that felt like a safe place to really, um, to really launch from. So, mm -hmm. you know, we never imagined it like this, but um, every day is full of discovery and he's taking us new places. Yeah, certainly. Well, he's taking the series in so many places and so many people are being reached by it. I hear uh, stories of impact all the time. And you know, Tyler, when you think about The Chosen and the impact it's having, what would you say um, is behind that impact? Why is it reaching people so uniquely with the message of Jesus? That's a great question. I think The Chosen is unique among other media of its type or of its genre in that we've really emphasized the humanity of Christ, you know, not some lofty, faraway figure that we can't relate to, but someone who's fully God and fully man. And the fully, the fully hum, human aspects are something that we love to explore and that people recognize, oh, that's the Jesus that I know. Um, and Jesus is someone that people spend time with daily in prayer and the word. Um, but that's all, you know, a very personal uh, experience. But when it's broadened to something that many people can see and hear and experience, um, I think it just activates people. And it's been exciting to watch people get excited about the person of Jesus um, in, a, in, in a space that's beyond just their own um, private experience. But something that's more like as a, as a group. Well, that's good. You know, I've said this before, but I, I went to Bible college and I went to theology school. And when I saw The Chosen, Jesus came alive for me in a new way. And putting it on for my kids, I saw them say, oh, that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so interesting. But I know you walk a fine line, um, Ryan, specifically between uh, historical fact, which is in the Bible. You know, mm -hmm. the Bible's 3.9 billion copies of the Bible sold. So we know lots of people are reading it. Yeah. And so many followers of Jesus are so focused on that story. But there's this fine line between historical fact and inspired imagination as you write these scripts. Yeah. Tell me about how you guys balance that, that fine line. Well, you know, it goes back to the, the thing. It's a, it's a great question. It's the question for believers, right? Like, we're not adding to Scripture. What we intend to do is to take the word, to, to the, the letters on the page, and portray them as faithfully as possible. What the Bible doesn't tell us, because it is telling us the story of uh, God's redemption of mankind, is that what, what, what it was like to have been there. So... We, of course, can't know ourselves, but what we try to do with uh, the tools at our disposal, which is the television medium, and then our resor res researchers mm -hmm. and our, our, uh, our faith advisors, is that we try to breathe life into those stories that are on the margins and that the Bible acknowledges happened, 
those characters like Nathaniel. Think of Nathaniel. Yeah. We, we know very few salient points about his life. We know he was under a fig tree. We know Jesus called him. But what happened in between? Why was he there? What were the circumstances of that moment? And that must have been a revolutionary thing that happened in Nathaniel's life. Yeah. How do we get our audience to, to take him off the stained glass and to see him as three-dimensional, maybe even somebody we could relate to in our best moments, right? Um, so, so that's what the show wants to do. We're three people who, who love, with our partner Dallas, um, we're three people who love the Bible, mm -hmm. and we love its stories. And we we're using the imperfect medium of television to, to adapt the perfectly written Bible um, in a way that conveys emotion and um, you know gives a window on how it, how how powerfully it impacts us. Yes, you know, and as you mentioned, those lesser known characters or moments in the Bible, uh, the New Testament, where it's not really unpacked what was happening exactly. I find myself when I'm watching the chosen, thinking to myself, well, what would I do in that moment? So if I was, what would I actually be mm -hmm. thinking if I was watching and. And there, so it's amazing to see you fill in the ideas with inspired imagination, um, you know. But also, Ryan, there are some characters we know so well. So you think about Judas, and you think about Peter. You know, we know their stories, and we know what happened. But what's interesting about the Chosen is you're able to write those characters in a way that feels fresh and surprising. Mm. So when I see your portrayal of them, I'm like, oh. Or even Matthew, the tax collector. Tell us a bit about how you keep the writing fresh when the stories are so well known at the same time. Well, it's not that hard to use your imagination to think outside the box of what you've always been told. We kind of have to scrub that, you know, and and put away our preconceived ideas about like, well, Peter was the rock, so he must have been a certain way, or or Judas, you know, was the betrayer, so he must have been a certain way. When we approach them just as people, without their titles, without their baggage, without their cultural labels or history or whatever. They're just people like you and me and like the three of us in the writer's room who have the same problems, who get up in the morning thinking about similar things despite being removed by thousands of years. The human experience is remarkably consistent yeah. in many ways, which is why the Bible being as old as it is, is still resonant for people because these stories still matter and they still affect us. So it, a lot of it has to do more with getting out of the way of those things that people automatically just jump to in their mind mm -hmm. and starting with like, this is just a Jewish guy <laughs> in first century <laughs> Uh, Middle East, uh, living his or her life, and what would that be like? So it's, it's really about getting down at the ground level. I love that. It's so refreshing. And that's actually how we are supposed to look at each other. Mm. That's, you know, you look at the Psalms in the Bible, and David is laying his heart bare. He's just, you know, he's right. a king, but he's just a man full of brokenness and all mm -hmm. these different layers. Yeah. Uh, so beautiful. Um, you know, when you're looking, you know, in season three of The Chosen, there was a big focus on the on the women, which was wonderful. I think a lot of us ladies loved that. Yeah. <laughs> Going yeah. into season four, yeah. there's some really powerful story arcs happening. Yeah. And Ryan, can you tell us a bit about what viewers can expect in those story arcs? What are we going to encounter and see this season? Um, I think that the Bible, you know, in this in this um, season of Jesus' ministry goes to some some dark places. Mm -hmm. I want to contrast it against some, some modern television out there. It's sort of a landscape populated by anti-heroes, and they do the thing that's convenient to make their lives better in the short term. Mm. But their arc is towards doom. Mm. The Chosen is a hopeful show by its very nature. We're, 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 we're telling the, story, the greatest story ever told about hope and faith, um, and, and its arc means that the characters do th the right things, which doesn't make their lives easier in the short term, but the arc is towards redemption, the arc is towards salvation for our characters. So I would say they're in that season right now when some of the right next things for them to be doing make their lives difficult, mm -hmm. and to tell the truth, to stand up to authority as the stakes increase and as the, uh, the enemies close in means that they're going to be in some peril. Mm. Mm. So interesting, and uh, I, I thought that was such an interesting comparison you made to uh, you know common stories that we're seeing right now when yeah. you know about the antihero, but they're making their lives easier. It really makes me think of season four will show us what it means to take up your cross mm -hmm. when Jesus says those yeah. words. What does that look like? Now, for both of you, this is a question I'd love for you both to answer. Uh, we can start with you, Tyler. What was one of the most challenging or intriguing scenes for you to write in season four? Well, we always knew we would eventually get to the story of Lazarus. It's not much of a spoiler to say that that's in season four. It's in the trailer. It's also in the Bible. You can read it there. Um, but 
you know, you grew up with the Lazarus story seeming like just such a triumph, like, oh, this guy walked out of the tomb. But when you really, when we decided to bring it to life on the page and filming it, it's more than just um, a miracle. There's a lot of, like, sorrowful pieces leading up to it. You know, his sisters were grieving. They were upset at Jesus for not doing more sooner. Um, Jesus said he was using this uh, situation as a way to grow the faith of his disciples, but what was going on with their faith that it needed to grow? So we had to ask all these questions and it was, it was so interesting to take it off the felt board, so to speak, and really get into the details of what was this event like and was it probably scary for people and were some people upset? And so I, I'm looking forward to audiences getting to experience that in a fresh and new way. Oh, that sounds good, yep. That's and what about you, smart. Ryan? Um, I think that for me, you know, we have uh, a season that's populated with um, increasing stakes. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, the most difficult things for, for, for me personally was to, to think about how then do characters that we've tried to draw three-dimensionally, when you're squeezed, people's people's weaknesses are exposed. Mm. And so to go through our cast of beloved characters and to go one by one and go, what is your weakness that's being exposed by, by the pressure of uh, increased, you know, uh, you're on a timeline that's running short. You've got enemies that are closing in. You're being questioned at every turn. Like, what are the things that come out for each character? And then to keep track of those 12 stories as they relate to the, of course, the thirteenth character, very famously, <laughs> um, you know that was that was the biggest challenge for us. Yeah, yeah, it is a big challenge, and uh, that's a good question we could ask ourselves. How do we yeah. react when we're being squeezed on all sides, and we do see our the fruits of who we are, what we believe? I have to ask you both as well. Uh, you know, how has writing this series shaped your spirituality? Have you has it changed your view of the Bible and of Jesus and? Where do you see growth? Where do you see a difference in how you believe and practice your faith? We can uh, start with you, Tyler. Sure, I mean, there, there's no better project to, to work on if you want to impact your spirituality than something that's adapted from the Bible. That goes without saying. But I think because we want these characters to speak authentically and not just like, oh, well, it's in red letters on the page, so we must put it in Jesus' mouth. I think the, the sort of almost incarnational process of figuring out, well, how do we make these words or this dialogue feel earned? Why, for instance, with we have Simon on the water, uh, you know, calling out to Jesus. We could just put that in his mouth because it's in the Bible, but why not, you know, explore what would bring him to that place where he was so desperate, as we did in season three, as you mm -hmm. referred to with the story with Eden. So I think, you know, taking away this idea of like, just because it's in the Bible, we're gonna have him say it, but asking why, and then really peeling back the layers has helped me to understand the words of scripture in a new way where it's not just a given. They are given, but but to, to look at what's on the page and really experience it as like, such an authentic and natural and correct response to things that were happening in these characters' lives. And then to experience that so vividly and to feel validated by the types of like struggles that these mm -hmm. characters are going through. And, and sometimes their behavior on the page seems a little bit hard to understand, but once you really try to identify with it, you see yourself in it. So I think it's just seeing myself in so much of what's there already in the Bible, which anyone can do, no matter who you are. But when you're trying to make it relatable to millions of people, it really is a, a, spirit, a grueling spiritual <laughs> exercise that's like, so rewarding. Yeah, yeah, it is a spiritual exercise. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess for me, you know, the, uh, the idea that for the last six years, Tao, Dallas, and I have had a job that allowed us to go into the Word and open the page and interpret it anew and to try to set aside some of the things that maybe were preconceptions uh, that we dragged in with the assumptions that, um, you know, a uh, passage we'd, we'd heard or not, not internalized uh, for, for years. Um, we were, we were forced to read them anew and imagine in context. That's a really hard thing to do, I think, when you're growing up or when you're, you're reading uh, the Bible in an academic setting, as I did in college. Um, it's now, you know, my, my advisors told me when that, that process began in college, this may not be a faith-promoting experience. Yeah. 
to, to analyze it and, and think of it from a scholarly perspective and to get in all sorts of, but, but, but this has been almost the opposite. Like it is an analysis of this in our experience of life and how truly it resonates with the three of us and how truly just portraying those words whose impact or authority we can never uh, recreate, but just to, to, to give them a sort of uh, a, a lighting and, and project them onto a screen and how they resonate with the audience today, it's an amazingly faith-building activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a real uh, reversal of, of the sort of academic pursuit in my earlier life. So interesting, and it results in such a fresh perspective on the Bible, a perspective that takes into account uh, context and what was really happening and what humans were experiencing around Jesus. Yeah. And it's giving us a fresh perspective as viewers of The Chosen. But it's a very serious Bible study endeavor. Right. <laughs> That's what it sounds it like. Is. It's, <laughs> that you guys it's. take every time you sit down and write a script. Well, I'm so thankful for your hearts and, and for your passion, your gifts, and how you have poured that all out to serve um, creating the chosen for so many of us to encourage us in our faith. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today, Ryan and Tyler. Thanks for having Thank us. You. The Chosen season one to three aired recently on Yes TV in the fall. But if you're now ready to watch season four, then check your local theater listings or go to www.thechosenriseup.com. It has both Canadian and American listings. Episodes will be released in theaters, two to three episodes per grouping. And so you'll be able to see so many of the episodes that you love. Make sure you tune in.